thought we ran the ad earlier this morning for uh, for WVU, and uh, it is something that I have some experience with, unfortunately. Uh, eight years in my background. I remember that, yes. And I remember the uh, first uh, September that I was back, I remember you had uh, set up a couple interviews for us uh, during the course of, of that month. I heard during the uh, the commercial, I think it mentioned something about uh, men in their, I guess if you're 50 years old, you're supposed to get your exam mm-hmm. or, uh, or or whatever. And I, and I noted that... Uh, Unless you have family history or at a high risk, then it's sooner. Good inter- interjection. So yes. I'm turning 49 this year. I should be going. Yes. To, oh, you geez. <laughs> Joy. Men. Ju- Ju- I mean, oh, no. we I got to go to a doctor. Us complain. Oh, I have to have my mammogram. Right. Oh, I have to have yeah, my colonoscopy. Yeah. Oh, I have to have my. Ch- you know, I mean, it's just. All, all I'm well, saying is. a bone is sticking out of my body. <laughs> I'm really. I don't go to the doctor. <laughs> when choosing your doctor for this exam, I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't choose a doctor who plays the piano, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you want somebody with more, let's shall I put it, petite fingers. How's that sound? I've heard, I've heard it's one of the best, the colonoscopy is one of the best sleeps you can have. Colonoscopy is great. Yeah. yeah. You don't, other than the prep, you know, because yeah. you don't even know what's going but on. But, you know, I think we had this discussion. When I we had did. my last one in uh, January, there's a pill option now instead of drinking all yes, of that, all that stuff. stuff. And honestly, it wasn't that bad at all. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. I, but yes, when I woke up, I was like, oh, you just feel so refreshed. I know. It is great. These, these are <laughs> the conversations. Not that anyone looks forward to yeah. a colonoscopy, no. but. But the sleep, yes. But these are the conversations you never, if we were like four 20-year-olds doing a show, this yeah, would be like, never be a conversation. About? I know. Right? No, what yeah. does that tell us, well, people? It's becoming a reality for me because I'm coming up to that 50 mark, and I'm going to push it right up to 50 in a day. Right yeah. up to the end. There I enjoyed the day you got your reading glasses because when you first bought this place, you didn't need them. And I was the only yeah. one in the building who did. You know, it, so you used to call me old man all yeah, the time. It's calmer because uh, Delegate Height, uh, I've been friends with him a long time. And he's 10 years older than me. And I used to make fun of him because he had bad knee and a bad ankle. And he had reading glasses. He was losing his hair. Everything I laughed at him about is <laughs> happening to me. <laughs> So what does so, that tell so you? Is I just that a don't lesson laugh. to you? I don't laugh at him anymore. So I just praise him. There you go. <laughs> I tried to warn you. I did. There you go. You thought you'd be young forever. We all do. We all did at one time. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. What we have these conversations all the time. Amen. Yes. But you and Maria stay looking young forever. Well. And that's nice. There's there's ways to, to make that happen. <laughs> let me just say. <laughs> I was going to say... The bottle doesn't lie, but then people might not There's know when I'm talking, talking about that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That one that. too, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, Teresa, are are you able to tell us break any news, or is is that still not ready for public? Attribution. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, there's really nothing that we haven't already released. I mean, certainly we um, released last month a, a news release that we are expecting our new president and CEO for WVU Madison, Berkeley, and Jefferson Medical Centers here. Um, his first day will be November 4th. His mm-hmm. name's Mark O'Hearn. He's coming from UPMC in Pittsburgh. Is it Mark O'Hearn or Mark O'Hearn? Mark O'Hearn. Mm-hmm. O'Hearn. Oh, Hearn. Marco. A Pittsburgh guy. Irish, a Irish Pittsburgh Irish guy. Irish guy. taking over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually uh, did his um, undergrad and um, graduate work at Cornell. So, um, but, oh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're uh, looking forward I to believe. him. Of course, we had the opportunity to meet him, and um, he, he's just going to be a great fit. Um, he loves, he and his wife, they have two young children, so they're uh, looking forward to coming to the community. So we're excited. Very nice. Of course, we've had the pleasure of having Albert Wright, our system CEO president, as our interim here um, since um, June, mm-hmm. since the floodgate that we had, right. our OR floodgate at uh, BMC. But What's your status so, with that, by the way? Uh, everything's fine now. Yeah, I mean, we had those all remediated and reopened um, by the end of July. So within six weeks of that flood on Memorial Day, we uh, were able to get those back up and, mm-hmm. and open so okay uh what uh, special programs do you have going on in september well uh actually the saturday is our uh pickleball tournament our frank sabato oh, jr md pickleball we've changed many, that uh, last year are, we we are full 64 really? uh-huh wow. yeah yeah so we have um 23 folks in the morning and uh, 
it's 23, 32 and 32. So 32 at 8.30, 32 at 10.30. So we switched from tennis to pickleball last fall. We just saw that coming. That well, it's the fastest growing sport it, in America, it, Absolutely, it? and it was kind of like, you know, this is when we need to do this. So the committee decided, and a lot of our committee members – which Kazen being one, right. um, who used to play tennis a lot, Ernie Ogbiani, um, you know, they switched to pickleball as well. So. What do you plan on uh, raising for a pickleball tournament? Well, our goal is always $12,000 because we use that for scholarships, $2,000 scholarships for each of the six public high schools in Berkeley okay. and Jefferson counties. Um, for students who are going into pre-med or now we expanded it to nurse practitioner or physician assistant. So uh, interesting in the medical field it's just a one time so but actually I was looking at the numbers before I left um, we're at about sixteen thousand five hundred dollars net now your golf tournament is probably the most popular uh, golf tournament in the panhandle mm -hmm. um, that's the Bernie Hutzler Correct. Um, how much do you raise from we that? raised this year eighty eight thousand dollars and you use that for medical medical equipment yes more, correct correct yes we um, purchased some equipment for our heart and vascular institute and we're also looking at some equipment um, for our um, operating rooms at Berkeley medical and then Center. coming up I'm on the apple harvest board I know you have apple trample the hospital's very uh, involved in, in that we do and um, registration is open for that um, that's Saturday October 19th um, that's the Bob Barron or Apple Trample 5K, if you recall, yeah. after Bob passed, we renamed it in his memory because the money from this event, um, from the sponsorships, goes directly to our cancer center um, and our cancer Welcome. comfort fund, correct? Um, they also need some new infusion chairs this year, so um, we're hoping to raise enough to be able to purchase some some new chairs um, in our infusion center for our can local local cancer patients. And that's it's a great event. Um, the apple trample, whether you're a runner, a walker, what have you, um, just uh, not quite to the tune of the Labor Day breakfast, but the folks that you see have been running, walking for years, and it's just a really nice community event um, to take part in and uh, but we always get well often get a really nice day for it too um, we're hoping yeah yes. exactly I remember not too long ago a couple of years it was a bit chilly but at least we haven't had rain for a while mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, the proceeds from the actual race go to the Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival Committee to help continue um, uh, you know, organizing and, and, and putting on this um, this festival every year, but the sponsorship money and any private donations that come in, which if you go to the website, you can also just make a donation. Uh, some of our walkers and runners also have set up their own donor pages so that folks can, can Annie Barriner, for example, has done that, so that folks can also sponsor her for walking. And again, all of that money will come back to our uh, Cancer Institute here in the Eastern Panhandle. Teresa McCabe is our guest here on the program from WVU Medicine. Uh, before I ask a question that takes us off uh, the path, is there anything else you wanted to make sure people knew about in September, Teresa? No, I think we're good. Okay. And, well, that was in October, so oh, we actually I'm covered sorry. two months. Yeah, we're moving ahead. We yeah. are really yeah. moving ahead. Well, we, want, we want people to sign up for it, right? We Absolutely. do. Yeah. There we go. do. You gotta so, yes. Yeah. So, if you just Google um, Bob Bear and Apple Trample, it'll take you to the runsignup.com page, and that's where you can get all of your information. We've got a new just route go to this run year. Sign up .com. Hey, are there, are there things uh, that are in the hospital's interests while well, we have a delegate in the room that you folks have been watching out of Charleston and anything with the change over the justice administration to whoever is the new governor and new legislator legislators being sworn in in January and February of this upcoming year. Are there things that you've been watching? Well, of course, we all, CON is always a big one. That always tends to come up. Um, PEIA reimbursement, that's always a big one. Those are two top of minds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just got put on the PEIA committee. We oh. just got appointed uh, two months ago. Interesting. Um, it is more interesting than I thought it would be because I was really not looking forward to it. I was like, what do I know about Oh, you it? didn't but, volunteer for that one? I, I didn't volunteer. I was, I was assigned. <laughs> um, a, a position became open. I got assigned. I was like, well, let's see what this is about because well, I'm not really in that. But. Right, right. And we hear a lot about PEIA and um Again, from a truth be told standpoint, my husband is a state 
employee, even though he's a county circuit judge, um, and he uh, he is under PEIA, and he received a letter um, basically because he's coming up on that other magical age that's not mm -hmm. 50 but 65, <laughs> saying we highly encourage you, even though he's going to continue to serve on the on the bench, um, you know, to sign up for a Medicare supplement. And I'm like, wait, you're, you're a full-time employee. And he's like, that's, here's the letter. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting hmm. that they're advocating for you to get a supplemental Medicare. I don't know what that says about PEIA, but we can assume what it says about PEI. We'll just put in a little plug. Our yeah. uh, insurance company, Peak Health, that is associated with WV Medicine, we have a Medicare Advantage program. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that is available now, I'll just say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. For anyone needing that supplemental insurance. Mm -hmm. in, in regards to certificate of need, has that ever gotten a whole lot of momentum out of the state? That's one of Not those things really. that gets discussed a lot. Every but. year it's I mean, on I the think agenda. This last session we actually... Um, and, and Teresa reached out to us. Um, there was WVU uh, hospitals. Don't get me wrong. They were actually taken over another hospital, so we released some of that for them to mm -hmm. do that in, in some legislation. It comes up every year. Um, in in the the big thing, it, it just doesn't get out of committee. Um, I haven't seen it now with a new governor. You never know. New governor and and lots of new um, new folks from especially here. from here. Yeah. Yes, I know. So, um, so I haven't seen it. Think get about it. You're going to be like one of the. You're like a big it's deal. Seasoned one. It's really you and scary. Mike height. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's generally about thirty percent turnover, and um, with the amount of people from the EP who didn't run <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, again, we definitely lost some. Uh, some leadership so hopefully we'll, we'll ascend in the ranks when uh, i want to go back to co in a little bit still yeah. too and and when we had the whole ordeal with the trash companies and co in the case made for keeping it was we have a lot of rural roots that frankly you lose money collecting on those but that's the only way those folks are going to get trash service is if somebody mandates that they provide trash service is there Something about a rural state that requires the necessity of certificate of need, Teresa? I don't think so. That's you're out of my area of expertise, but right. I do not think so. And many states don't have. And and we talk need. about that mm -hmm. a lot. The difference between certificate of need in a healthcare environment versus in the, the private Other sector industries. in mm -hmm. hospice. Um, mm -hmm. There there's so many different nuances there that it's really difficult when you try to do a one-size-fits-all kind of piece of legislation that may and, not work for everybody. And that's the argument. I mean, we have sort of certificate of need for taxi companies, for limo companies. It, it, it's a broad stretch. But when you talk about health care, it, it starts to get – the argument starts to get really important because the rest of the state is not like us. We have options here. We can go – if we choose, 15 minutes south, 15 minutes north, mm -hmm. um, a lot of places in, in our state don't have that option. They're, they're going an hour to their closest rural hospital. Um, so it is important to protect those rural hospitals and those rural places and those small community um, urgent cares or things like that. Um, it's the imaging that, that you can start talking about. You have to get really into the weeds with certificate of need, and that's where... You, you can have these conversations um, and it's there's 50 on one side and 50 on the other arguing just as passionately for, for both well and I think too you made a really good point somewhere in the middle of the state um, the the parameters are a little bit different and so you know where we are here we know that um, that folks will be coming and they're gonna come here they're going to come here. They're going to maybe go to Morgantown. Um, uh, that's where all the action is. But in the middle of the state, in the southern part of the state, in some of those really rural Pocahontas, whatever counties, it's it's a whole different ball game. So there you go. Moving on.
Uh, let's talk about the hospital and in regards to future expansion of, of WVU Medicine. Teresa, what projects do you well, have? Well, we, uh, I, we were just talking a little bit. We just, a um, couple of weeks ago, reopened our same-day surgery entrance, dedicated entrance there on the Tavern Road side at Berkeley Medical Center, a brand-new waiting room for any of our same-day surgery patients and their families who are waiting for them. Very nice. Um, it was um, a renovation and expansion there. Um, and that was a part of our entire perioperative OR um, project, the $40 million project that we discussed, I think, a couple times ago um, when we were on the air. But that full project is not slated to be completed until next March or April mm -hmm. if everything stays on track. But again, expanding, going to be moving the lab um, up onto the second floor in the new area, um, then putting a 20 uh, – I believe it's a 20-bed observation unit right next to the emergency department, which makes a lot of sense because when you have patients come into the ED, for example, on our call this morning, we have 15 boarders in the ED waiting for beds or transport to higher-level care or f other facilities. Um, so that way, you know, if, if you're admitting, admitting someone in the observation unit, it's directly um, – beside the emergency department. Which makes Talk sense. a little bit about the use of the ER, ED, um, you know, when there are, you know, just a proliferation of uh, urgent cares out there and folks have all kinds of options. Would Could you put a percentage number on the people who come to the ER um, who truly are having a medical emergency versus something that you could really sort of handle at that an would urgent have been a great question last time for Dr. Mike Laudner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he was and who an ED I know. physician is our VPMA. Right. Yeah. But you know, I mean, and I see like the the daily um reports Census. Mm -hmm. and um, the, the, every morning at 8 a.m., Monday through Friday, we have what we call a daily safety call where all the departments report out. Honestly, the people we're seeing in the emergency party are sick. I mean, you look at the, at the report, and I mean, stroke, you know, yeah. trauma because of the interstate and, you know, accidents yeah, sure. and, and that kind of thing. And I think he touched on that before. Um, I do think that people are using the urgent cares more for minor types um, of care or uh, the need for, for minor types of injuries and illnesses. Um, they also try, I know, to get in to see their primary care physicians, but we know that's not always very easy to do when you need um, an appointment right away. Although we talked about that yesterday, having our family medicine, our primary care folks um, you carve out some time in their schedules for those sick appointments or same day types of appointments. Again, to help keep people from having to use the emergency department um, or even our urgent cares sometimes i mean are, are are very very crowded your expansion into spring mills and inwood mm -hmm. it has been i mean the amount of growth you've had for the hospital over the last few years is incredible um are there any other areas that you plan to expand into within the eastern panhandle or is it really sticking along that i-81 corridor um, I think in Berkeley County, and of course we did open our, our medical office building in Shepherdstown as well a few That's years right. back, actually during COVID. <laughs> we opened And it's that. beautiful. Yes. That's where my primary doc is. <laughs> so, I mean, so, you know, we have tried, especially, I, I think our focus is going to be more with primary care, trying to get... Um, that out more into the community, the specialty care, bring that back closer to the hospitals, which makes sense. Yeah. Is there any more room on your campus, um, on the main campus, for any further expansion? Well, actually, we just purchased a 33-acre parcel um, across the street from Berkeley Medical Center, the Townsend Farm property. Um, so we just closed on that, our foundation, actually, because we own most of the medical office buildings and so forth. Um, so our WVU Hospitals East Foundation purchased that 33 acres, and that is for future expansion. And that is adjacent, then, to, to where you go get medical, your colonoscopy. Our medical office building three, yes. <laughs> okay. If you're Sorry. facing that building from Tennessee Avenue, okay. it's to the left. And okay. it goes all the way over uh, behind well, that's exciting. Home Health. And, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we're well, very excited about 81. that. It borders 81. 81. Yes. You have plenty of parking there. I hear some parking concerns now. And we, yeah, we have a plan. Why? And we've talked a little bit about the new tower at Berkeley, and certainly once that 
uh, and that project was delayed a bit because of the whole approval process because of our OR situation that we had with sure. the flooding. Um, but that's back on track now to be addressed next spring. Um, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can move forward with that. There's talk of perhaps some sort of a parking garage or um, because it, the tower is going to be on the front of the building the way that it's now looking, the design. We would lose a lot of our existing parking that's right around the, the front of the hospital. So, yes, there, there's talk of a pedestrian bridge and then having parking across the street um, at the Tennessee. Well, you do a really Tennessee, good job Tennessee. with the shuttle and everything yes, now. It's yes. not and like you're taking your life in no, your hands. And we're crossing. actually using that more. We're putting up signage. I mean, you know, at first that shuttle was just for staff, and we encourage staff to park over there. But now um, we're also um, going to make it available to um, to patients or family members who have to park way. I mean, I had a meeting yesterday at the hospital, and I parked on the other side of the McCormick building. Now, I wanted to get in my steps, so that was fine with me. But, yeah, if someone, sure. um, certainly you don't want visitors. And, so uh, do you have a whole patients. department looking at the future uh, growth? And how, I mean, you, oh, you're talking do. about putting a whole tower on the front we of the do. hospital. We <laughs> do, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, we have a senior executive team. I, I'm a part of that. Um, and we meet every Monday and talk about, lots of things, daily operational types of things, and then future planning and so forth. But yes, um, there is a plan. And, and of course, we're also looking at Jefferson County and expanding down there. I mean, we need more medical office space. Um, we need to look at Jefferson Medical Center and what we're going to do with that. So hopefully within the next few months or so, we should be able to announce um, some some uh, projects and so forth specific to Jefferson County as well. I have 60 seconds left. Review your activities coming up, Teresa, and how to register for them. Well, Pickleball's full, so, but, but we thank everyone who has supported that. But on uh, October 19th, we do have our uh, 2024 Bob Berner Apple Trample 5K as part of the Mountain State Apple Harvest Festival. And we encourage folks to go to runsignup.com. If you're interested in either participating, you can walk, you can run, or um, you can donate. Uh, just make a straight out donation, and that money will go to the Cancer Comfort Fund. Uh, at our Cancer Institute, and hopefully we'll be able to not only help our cancer patients, we do a lot of gift cards for food and gas to get them to and from appointments, but also to get some new infusion chairs for our cancer center. Uh, now, pickleball is full, but you can still be uh, bet and gamble on uh, the actual <laughs> matches, if I'm correct. I think Teresa's booking those bets herself. <laughs> You can come watch if you'd yeah. like, and you can yeah. make a donation, a tax-deductible yeah. donation. Ten percent big. All, all bets will lose. Ten percent big. Where is that? Out. It's at the Randy Smith Center in Inwood. Thank goodness, because they're calling for rain. So, yeah. yes, we are inside. And we thank um, Martinsburg, Berkeley County Parks and Rec for letting us use the facility for this event. Thank you, Teresa. This segment of the show brought to you this morning by the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm in Martinsburg. Get more with Mansion Ferretti, wvjusticelawyers.com, and by Parsons Ford. Of Martinsburg, we became number one by making you number one first. This is Talk Radio, WRR Martinsburg, and TV 10. If you or someone you know suffers from the disease of addiction, help is available. From the Berkeley County Quick Response Team, with peer recovery coaches and support promptly to the homes of those who've recently experienced an overdose. This collective effort towards